Hello, Darren Leggett here, Property Ladder Group for PLG Digital. We are recording today with the wonderful, infamous Jill Steele. Uh, we're gonna be talking about different aspects of Jill's work and some wonderful things we've got coming up in the pipeline. So without further ado, so Jill, thank you very much for joining me today. How are you? Welcome to you too. And thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very well, thanks. Wonderful, good. So. Everybody knows who you are, Jill, let's be honest. You, you're certainly a celebrity in the world of probate and trust and, and all things taxing. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you have been doing up until now for anybody that might need a refresh, not that I imagine as many of those people. Well, um, I suppose for 25 years, I was traveling around the country. So of course that all stopped with COVID and it required me to have a rethink about what I was going to do. And I really didn't want to carry on traveling around, but I still wanted to give things to professions. So I thought, okay, time to go online. So that's what we did. We took the business online. We've set up a web shop. So since January, we've been pounding the airwaves rather than the roads, uh, putting out um, all sorts of things, um, webinars, and we've got technical learning packs. We've still got the monthly digest and we're doing in-house, we're doing bigger events. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> and how, how has that transition been, Jill? Because it's quite a different thing, isn't it? From the attending a conference to all these solicitors packing up and going to a, a venue you, yeah. to see you and, and what have you, to, to this online way of living. Yeah, it is different. You're quite right. I mean, first of all, I, I tried all different kinds of software. Um, and perhaps surprisingly decided Zoom was the best one. Um, I did some training to make sure I knew how to do it all. And yes, it's different, it's a different techniques. But I have to say, I do enjoy it. Um, obviously when you're doing webinars to big groups of people, you can't see them, you can't talk to them. But I like the in-house ones where you can talk to a group of 10 or maybe 20 and you can see them and you can take their questions as you go. With the bigger events, it's got to be done by chat, but that's okay. And uh, yeah, it's good fun. It's a very different kind of thing. And I feel much more relaxed because I'm not traveling the country all the time. You know, it does get to you after a while. So it's, it's pleasurable. So I can just focus on producing things that I hope people want. So the technical learning packs is just a sort of development of materials that people can do to how to do something, you know, so how to draft a standard family will. My idea behind these was to try and give um, firms the opportunity to provide a pack to a junior who was coming into the department or joining the firm and it would save some of the senior people's time, you know, so that, that was one aspect of it. Um, and of course, delivering the digest online anyway, that's been going on for a while, uh, since 2018. So that's carried on and, uh, you know, producing that. So yes, there's lots of production going on <laughs> as well as delivery. <laughs> it's a very different world, isn't it? It is. And uh, I, I mean, I think as much as the, the transition for, for the delegates, mm -hmm. It's quite a big thing for you, because like you said, you're doing a lot of traveling, which I understand. I've done a lot of that <laughs> in my career too. How do you feel when you're sitting there looking at a camera, not really able to gauge the reaction of the people that you're talking yes. to? Yes, now that it, it is, you're quite right. Unfortunately, with a big group, you've got no way of knowing whether they're doing other things or asleep. <laughs> and, and I'm sure people do multitask because they'll just pick up on the things that interest them. Sure. That's fair enough. Um, but when you're dealing with a smaller group and you can actually see them on the video cam, you know, using some of the tools that the software has, like polls, like direct questioning, I can say, Fred, what do you think? And they can't just be asleep, you know. And, and I found that to be quite nice because although it's not the same as seeing them on the front row of a, of a training centre, at the same time, it's more intimate because you're seeing them in their own uh, home or sometimes uh, or in the office and yeah you can get the camaraderie going so I find that works just just good you know it's probably a better but yes it's a shame you can't see the big venues you can't see what's gone down well you can't tell whether they're laughing at your joke I'm sure they not. are Jill I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you've got them all in stitches throughout <laughs> I mean you're a very interactive person I mean I, we, we've known each other for a number of years now yes and I've got to say sitting down and talking to you or listening to you as I have done in many, many conferences has always been a real pleasure and I've always been inspired by it. But you you know your stuff. It's, it's fair to say, you know your stuff. So, I mean, what what is the one thing, I mean, do you find at the moment that people are coming to you wanting to learn more than anything else? What's the, if you had, to, I mean, I'm sure there's many things, but if you had to put it down to one 
area. Yeah. What is it that people are Well, at the moment, it's trust, inevitably, Darren, because um, everyone's grappling with the trust registration service. And it's been delayed. Um, They keep on delaying the production of the guidance. So we're in a situation where the next two days, and that's all I'm doing, I'm talking about trust registration to different firms. And it's the questions that pop up all the time on LinkedIn. And it's the thing that gets people worried because people on the whole, unless they have specialised in trust, more general private client practitioners always worry about trusts. It's not the thing they feel as confident in as doing probate or wills. And so it's a sort of area where something like this happens and they go into panic syndrome, which I don't blame them at all. And having been on some committees with HMRC over this, um, I, I don't think I'd know as much as I do about it had I not got involved on behalf of the profession. And so I feel it my job to get it out there because, you know, poor old practitioners struggling to make a living, but also having to grapple with all this stuff. It's a minefield. I mean, my, my experience is obviously completely um, focused on the property side of it. Yes, absolutely. Which um, <clears throat> we work with a lot of um, trust organisations um, where they come to an, an, and ask for valuation of, of trust would. property. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've got to say, I, I think that that hand-holding and that guidance, mm. we, 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 you will use the word collaboration, Jill, mm, don't mm, you? Mm. It's so important to work with the right totally people. It totally is. I mean, both trust but also probate, of course. And when you're doing estate planning, you need valuation. And um, you've got to be able to produce something that's going to go down well with HMRC. So the fact that you produce reports, particularly in the probate, but I'm sure in the same with um, court protection and also with the uh, work of trust lawyers, I mean, they need valuations to do the tax returns. And that's where you come in. (laughs) So again, looking at the, the, the world that you're living in at the moment, how many how does the webinar walk talk talk to me if you if you look at um how many you're doing a month or how many you're doing a year Mm. how do people access yes this service well there's there's different um providers of course so my law skills um has a web shop so it's literally just going to www.shop.lawskills.co.uk and they can find the range of products that we're selling there including my new introduction to probate course um but Otherwise, I'm doing probably each month maybe four to six webinars. So I do one for myself and then the others are for other companies. So Legal Futures and Today's Media and then sometimes Professional Bodies. So that's usually my work work month is those things, plus doing all the prep for the um, paperwork that I do. So the books and the notes and the preparation for individual firms, yeah. So you're not slowing down, are you? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> but at least I can do it in a way that's kind of managed, whereas before I was having to do it on trains and planes and in hotel rooms. You know, this is rather pleasant because I've got all my tools around me and I can just crack on, you know. Well, certainly from my perspective, the feedback that I get from the people that I work with and my team work with here um, that interact with you, whether it's on law skills or, you know, a, a more personal front, Everybody rates you so highly. So you're definitely the person to come to, aren't you? Well, I, I think I'll be walking out of this room with my head won't fit through the door, Darren. You're being too kind. But I, I think that, well, I've been around the block a while. And I think um, also people can say, Jill, what do you think? Which I always think is nice. It's not Mrs. Steele. It's not yeah. some far away person. But they feel they know me. So that's good. And uh, that hopefully means they listen when I talk to them and try and help them. Because I suppose you were, we were talking uh, previously about collaboration. And also, I was thinking to myself, why do I do things the way I do? And I kind of thought to myself, well, I know why. I've got four C's that sum me up. I'm curious. I'm a collaborator. And also, I'm a coach. Mm. and I'm a chocoholic <laughs> and and that's basically me and I think why am I that well I think I was sort of encouraged to be curious as a child and I hope I retain that childhood curiosity yeah. that's why I like to research things that's why I like to understand things because I'm no good at exams so <laughs> it's about understanding how things work and then you can explain it. So that's where the coaching comes in. And often along the way, you need to collaborate like we're doing now and like I hope we'll do in the future because there are so many other services which probate practitioners and private client practitioners need to be aware of. And I feel that my curiosity about other 
processes and services and products that are out there that can enhance the delivery for a practitioner, it's my job to make sure they know about them so that they can say, well, yeah, that will fit in with how we're doing things. And so I think that's how we've collaborated, isn't it? That, you know, you um, and, and I get along well so we can understand each other's products and services, but we also know where those fit with our own client bases. And I feel that, you know, the more I learn about what you can offer, to private practitioners, the more um, people should know about it because it's very valuable. Collaboration. Yes. We, we love that word, Jill. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've obviously worked very hard here at Property Ladder Group to try and understand the needs of private practitioners and, uh, and, 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 and gain a better understanding of what it is that we can do for them. We're obviously very keen to make sure that we listen Yes. Um, and I think that, I mean, that's the feedback that we get is that we, we understand what is required because we understand the sector. Mm -hmm. We listen to our clients' needs and requirements. Mm -hmm. Working together with you, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and obviously, you know, you are a, a, a supporter of PLG, and I think that's not, not because of yours and my relationship. It's mm -hmm. because our relationship formed because of the, mm -hmm. the service that we provide. Um, but, I mean, obviously, being on the front line and dealing with private clients law uh, solicitors and, 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 and legal professionals in general. What is it that you think they gain from kind of working with a collaboration or a hub, yes, and it, as yeah. we, we mentioned, or you, you named it the other day? Well, I, I think, Darren, um, like everything in business, uh, business relationships with other professionals is the key to doing business, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And finding a reliable source of a service that enhances your delivery to your customers has to be good news. So given that solicitors are required, if they're acting as professional, personal representatives themselves, or quite commonly as agents for them, their job is to tell the personal representatives, including themselves, that their duty is to get the best price possible for an estate property, similarly with a trust, to make yeah. sure that they do the same. <clears throat> and there are consequences if they don't. So finding a reliable source of valuations, of lettings, of managing a, a property portfolio, these are useful tools to have in the armory. And if you build a relationship with you know, your group, Property Ladder Group, then you, they know that they can rely on you to do that no matter where in the country they're based because of your network of agents and so forth. And so it's demonstrating that this idea of a hub, you being a hub for them, they can get access to all the services they need. Now, that's only come about because you've listened to what they need and have got the range of services under your umbrella. So I think that's good that they know that exists. And you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, isn't it? If you can produce the goods that actually makes um, the wheel oils the wheels, then obviously that's going to be good for them. Um, and good yeah. for their clients. Pudding. I do like pudding, Jill. Um, <laughs> yes, so... mixing my metaphors there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> pudding, chocolate. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I think, you know, I mean, certainly <clears throat> I've been on conferences with you mm -hmm. and we've travelled and, you know, um, and, and it is an interesting diversity, isn't it? We talk about that and, and, and kind of your old school lawyer and your then more entrepreneurial yes. lawyer. It doesn't matter their age. Yeah, it's just it how they've trained and, and yes. their, their ethos. Mm -hmm. How do you see the sector going, Jill? Yes. Because it, it, it's an interesting question, I think. I think it is. You're right. I think um, certainly currently um, there has been an upswing in private client work because of COVID, tragically, with extra deaths and so forth. So from being sometimes the Cinderella in a firm, they've probably been the saviour of a number of firms during a difficult time. But um, in the end, there's also the question of, well, where's that going in the future? Things level out. They've had to use technology in a way they didn't use to before. And so that costs money, investing in the kind of technology. And people are retiring and they need to get new people in and they don't want the risks that um, the older generation in the profession took. So I think there is a world now of the aggregator, yeah. the person out there trying to bring together a number of firms. And there's certainly quite a few of them around um, where they're cherry picking traditional firms to bring them within their umbrella and to provide for them back office services to try and get their costs down, provide them with that input into technology. And so obviously, yes, there's going to definitely be change for a lot of us 
um, from doing things well, not with a quill pen because that's totally out of date, <laughs> but certainly looking at processes and procedures perhaps differently. So obviously in that sense, again, uh, it was many years ago when there was the opportunity to think about multidisciplinary practices. Yeah. Never happened. But I think increasingly there will be a hub like you, a hub like that, firm of solicitors, and those hubs sometimes have to work together, as you do. So effectively, I think there'll be more aggregation in the sector from the legal side, and there will be more, I believe, collaboration between the different parts of the sector because they've got to deliver a really first-rate service to the customer because it's more competitive. The Legal Services Board wants us to be more transparent on price. So you've got to use all the levers to get that competitiveness. And that means collaborating and using technology. You wrote a book not so long ago, and I remember you asked me for my opinion on, on, on what was important about the costings of a law firm. And that kind of stuck with, with me. And, and, and I remember Helen and Graham, my business partner, um, and I talking about PLG and what that was going to mean. Mm. And your, our conversation always stayed in my mind. It has to be cost effective mm. because when we look at the word compliance and we, we keep using that word, Jill, <laughs> um, when we look at the word compliance, it's got such a huge meaning. Mm. And yes, you know, there is a corner that can be cut or a, a solicitor might choose to use a local estate mm. agent mm. because there's a, a reciprocal commercial agreement. Mm. But when we look at that word compliance and we look at the diligence that's involved with, with the care of a beneficiary, mm. um, what we wanted to do was, was ensure that the partners that we work with, whether it's a genealogist, whether it is um, somebody like a state search or, or, or you know, professional debt or any of the other firms that we work mm. with. So you're right, that hub, what, what is so important is ensuring that that end, that end result, that five-star service is in place and everybody's up to date communication is in place everybody knows what's going on but the cost and the end result for the customers there mm. have you seen a change mm. in the way that solicitors are thinking when it comes to that is there more of a, a, a broader kind of open to new ideas way of thinking or, or is are we still a little bit sort of five years behind where we should be with that hard to judge on the time frame but i would certainly say that more people are aware that they have got to use technology and got to use specialist services, and they might not be able to provide everything themselves. Yeah. And so definitely, I think there's an awareness that you can't merge with another firm as a lawyer if the IT isn't compatible. There's been many mergers that have demerged because the IT yeah. didn't work. That's a huge investment. So you know, going the route of an aggregator where they say, well, you've got to use our technology anyway, um, <laughs> is one way of looking at it. But I, I think that, you know, as you say, compliance, um, the more we understand our different professional roles requirements, I mean, as a surveyor, you'll know that you've got compliance issues. Similarly, as lawyers, we've got ours. They come together when we're working on a project for a client. And obviously, that's got to all fit nicely, hasn't it? So you're going to want to deal with professionals who are equal to you, and you want to be able to use the technology that works. So yeah, I think I think people are moving down that route. Um, it's hard to tell how long that will mean before the whole system is changed. Um, but you only have to look at what government has been trying to do. So we've had terrible disruption in the probate world while yeah. the government has tried to bring um, Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Service online. But it's gradually settling down. It's taken way too long and cost way too much. But soon it will be an entirely digital service. Um, a court of protection is teaching on the edge of going the same way. Yeah. And HMRC would like to go that way and make IHT digital, but they got sort of sidetracked with government decisions, which um, unfortunately made the uh, changes to tax such that they had to start again. But, you know, that's happening with the trust registration service. So in other words, the world of government that affects what we do is going digital. So therefore, firms have got to go digital in order to, uh, to work with them. So Jill... Let's talk about an introduction to probate mm -hmm. because this is going to be a subject that the majority of the people that are viewing this are going to be interested in. Right, okay. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, well, for some years I used to do um, a course face-to-face -face, which took several days to explain uh, the law behind probate and all the associated 
uh, factors and facets of it. So of course, going online, you've got to change your view. So I've produced a 10 module self-study course, which people can download off our web shop uh, to take a beginner from literally finding a will and what to do with it to winding the estate up and everything in between, including tax and so forth. And um, these modules are sequential, but you can do them in your own time and your own order. And each module has some notes. It has some further reading material suggestions. It has some resources like checklists, draft letters and things like that. And it has a testing your knowledge section with multiple choice questions. And then people like your good self have been kind enough to let me interview them. And so as appropriate, it's sprinkled with recordings just to make it a bit more interesting of ancillary services or other experts giving their two penneth. So it's all to help the person who needs to get from first base to being able to run a probate themselves. So my sort of really the focus for it is to say, well, practitioners have been so busy. Every client practitioner I speak to is up to here with work because of COVID and they need to get on, but they haven't got time to train up staff uh, to be able to delegate work too. And so this is my solution for them. Okay, I'm doing it for you. You don't have to train them. Here's the course. Uh, they can work through it in their own pace. Yes, give them guidance, but if necessary, they could always drop me an email to move them on. So that's really what it's for. And as you know, because you kindly helped me with the, the one on the dealing with property aspects, and then they get to know about ancillary services like your own, where they can tap in and see why that can help them. So it's it's an amazing opportunity mm. for people to really learn mm. from the best in the business <laughs> about a subject that they really, you know, they're going to need to have this information. Yeah. yeah. Obviously going very well. Yeah, yeah, all so done, Justin. <laughs> how, do people, how do people access it, Jill? Yeah, well, they can go onto my website. So they go into the shop. So it's www.shop.lawskills.com at um, it's lawskillsorry.co.uk and um, they could just simply go into online courses in the web shop and there it is so it's there for them to have a look there's a little video from me there's an oversight um, a checklist of things that's included and of course they can always ring me up to talk about it if they want so let's look at law skills as a website because we've we've mentioned law skills yes, numerous yes. times what does the visitor to the Law Skills yes. website find? Well, that's really kind of you to ask because it's got two aspects to it. It's not just the shop, mm. but um, for many years I've had a website which I call a curated website. In other words, it's not just me. I have a lot of people who contribute to it in terms of articles and interesting things. And so the actual website, which is just www.lawskills.co.uk, will have some free resources on there. It's got plenty of articles about all kinds of things to do with our world of wills, probate, trust, tax and elderly client. And it's got um, links to the shop for the products that they can buy. So um, they can download the um, access to the monthly digest, which is a subscription service, but they can download a free copy to see what it's like. Um, there's also the ability to sign up for our e-newsletter, which is free and that's monthly. Uh, but all the articles on there, it's all, all that's all free. And so it's quite a resource because it's been going years now. And there's a lot of stuff on there to search that they can find out about. Recent posts have included some guidance about how to be more profitable by Robert Mowbray. Uh, there's been a, a very interesting and timely article by, by Florence Richards of Furley Page about the changes to French inheritance uh, rules, which came in on the 1st of November, absolutely essential for people who own French property um, and uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's got all kinds of things on there. Mm. So Jill, mm -hmm. let's talk about CPD and conference. Mm -hmm. Because even though you are doing your online courses and, and, and CPD now, you and I have been talking mm -hmm. and we are very excited mm -hmm. to announce that we're going to be launching our very own conference. Yes. Uh, in and around the Colchester area. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to be the benefit to the local private client solicitor mm -hmm. in coming to our our conference over maybe one elsewhere? 
Well, I think there's going to be two things to me that stand out from our discussions so far, and I'm sure there'll be more when we've thought about it more. But the two things that stand out to me, one is A, it's locality. So it's bringing the opportunity for private client lawyers to network again. That's something I know they've missed. And, uh, you know, working in silos, either from home or even in an office, it's lonely. So it's nice to be able to get together and talk to your peers. So that'll be that opportunity. But perhaps what makes this distinctive from another conference is we were talking about perhaps going down the route of a case study being at the core of it and that we would use the hub that you've got to bring in other specialists around the case study so that it would be a, a more informal discussion of the, all the range of issues for a particular example. So perhaps a businessman's will that goes through his probate and then we have to look at the trusts that come out of it and deal with what happens if the trustee goes bonkers. All <laughs> things we could come up with which would pull in on different services and the skills of all of us, yourselves, uh, my skills, but also other ancillary skills as well. And I think that would give people a chance to interject Give, share their experience, ask questions as usual, but we'd also have a debate going on amongst the contributors rather than a formal lecture. And I think that would be different. I think absolutely. We were very keen to, um, I like to use the phrase, PLG it up a little bit. Mm. Um, but this is where uh, Jill Steele <laughs> and, uh, and PLG, we collaborate, there's that word again, yes. so well because we, we, we do have a wider mindset, don't we? We yes. do see that there are maybe different ways that you can do things. Mm -hmm. um, I think that solicitors probably want a change mm -hmm. and, and, and to experience a different form of learning, which you've proved in, in, in your approach to your, your online, um, your online uh, teaching. So I'm really excited about this. I think that the right people um, having a, a who's who, mm -hmm. the best in the business out there, mm. um, that we can say to solicitors, look guys, mm. You can trust this lot. These are the people that you should be using for whatever mm. specialist area you're mm. after. Mm. So how do you think it's going to look? Gosh, we haven't got that far, have we, Darren? I mean, I think, how's it going to look? I think it will be um, probably an informal platform. Mm -hmm. There will be, no doubt, um, a bit of interrogation by probably you and me of different <laughs> people. Um, hopefully, there'll be audience participation. And, and hopefully there will be a nice little book of contacts for people to take away and probably lots of other things by the time we get cracking. So I think it will just be a bit more interactive than the normal big conference. And exciting. And we're looking at, at, at pricing and we're trying to make sure that mm. it's really cost effective yeah. for the solicitor. Um, but the fact that, you know, we, we kind of, we're pushing the boundaries a little bit. That, that to me is the most exciting thing because I am known for it. <laughs> and, uh, and I think working together with you on this project for, for, for myself and my team, it, it, it's a great opportunity. So very exciting indeed. <laughs> Good. Jill, your monthly digest. Yes, Darren, yeah. Give us a little bit more of an insight into, yeah. into that. Please. Well, um, I guess it all came from my days when I was in practice, knowing that it was important to keep up to date. And you're sort of bombarded with newsletters, magazines, information from the Law Society and so on and so forth. And I thought, well, in a busy practice, we can't actually keep on top of that as an individual. And so we shared that in the team that I worked in. But since I've been doing what I do now, I thought, well, why don't I digest all that information? and put it in one place. Yeah. And so basically the monthly digest is me reviewing lots of different magazines across wills, probate, trust, tax and elderly client, all the cases that have happened in the month, developments in law, developments in practice, and I put them into a single document which gets mailed out to everybody on email. So those people who sign up for the digest get the whole lot. It varies a lot depending on the cases, but it's between 40 and 50 pages a month that goes out to people um, of all the key things you need to know. I've got to say, that's blown my mind. <laughs> I mean, if I'm a professional and, I've, I, and I really want to keep on top of my game, mm. I don't have to do all the research and all the reading no. anymore. No. I literally just come to you, subscribe yeah. to the digest, yep. and it's all there. Yep. That to me is yeah. absolutely a no-brainer. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I think it works because um, it, it is. It's got got the key points. It's got the detail if you want to read it all, but you could skim it if you didn't. Yeah. Um, it's got things. I mean, someone was talking to me the other day and said, 
Oh, she said, I didn't know that. I said, well, it was in the budget in March, but it's now coming on the 1st of January. Yeah. Is it? She said. That passed me by. So I said, well, there you are. If you've got the digest, you'd have known. <laughs> Point in case. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, in that case, how do people subscribe to your monthly digest? Well, the digest is um, something they can get off my website. So if they just keep it simple and go to www.lawskills.co.uk, they'll find on there a drop down list at the top and they can just click on the digest and it will take them to part of the website where they can download a copy to see what it's like. If they're taken with it, I hope they will be, then they can go into the shop by simply going up to the shop button at the top and it'll take them to where they can buy it. So they can basically subscribe and they can subscribe as an individual or a firm can subscribe for any number of users. I'm going to subscribe, Jill. I've got to say, I mean, I, I knew it was great, but I mean, that's that's educational for me. Yeah. I mean, it is so important in this mm. day and age, more than ever, compliance. Yeah, again, there's absolutely. that word again. Yeah. That's fantastic. What an amazing service. Good. Thank you. Yeah. I was talking the other day to a solicitor and we were discussing the problem of valuations in probate where on the one hand, if it's a non-taxable estate, you just go on the land registry website maybe. Um, but if you've got something a bit more complicated or a higher value property because the estate's taxable, you need a proper valuation and everyone groans because you might have to get an RICS red book valuation. But they don't, do they? Because uh, PLG can offer a really competitive product. So if I was to tell them to ring you up uh, and find out more about your service, what would you tell them? It's nice to be interviewed by, by somebody else for a change. This is odd. Um, it's a good question, Jill. Uh, we we um, would first of all try and establish whether the property needed a HMRC compliant report or whether we just needed to provide something that maybe could be relied on by beneficiaries or, you know, um, rather than just the one estate agent um, figure. What we found is with estate agents, as great as some of them are, and there are some really good estate agents out there, it should be said, that there are also the ones that maybe they've not done their research properly, they're trying to win an instruction, so maybe the valuation is inflated, or they hear the word probate and they downvalue it before yes. they've even gone through the front door. So it depends on what kind of valuation. For the um, for the non-taxable estates, we do what we call a rapid report. Mm -hmm. um, and a rapid report is very much, we look at Land Registry, we look at Right Move Plus, um, we uh, have a look at the different aspects of the property, kind of the location, mm -hmm. and we come up with a report that is completely unbiased. Mm -hmm. So it can be looked at, it can be relied on. Um, our HMRC compliant reports, yes. if you look at the cost of a RICS, mm. They're not cheap. So we come in at £150 plus VAT. Wow. Uh, it covers Section 160 of the Inheritance Tax Act 1984 mm -hmm. and the Taxation of Chargeable Gains Act 1992. Um, it's also used for trusts. Um, councils accept it. Um, and uh, really what you have in that is an amalgamation of many different areas of research. Uh, and we have had district valuers, mm. as I'm sure you've experienced in the past, pick up the phone and say, yeah. oh, justify that figure. All the extra research that we've got that doesn't go into the report, we're then able to back up. We do that as our aftercare guarantee, Jill. Mm -hmm. um, so look, it's not just about the report, it's about the support you get following that. Um, so that's the valuation side of it. We, we tend to um, need to get access to the property with the full report. We send three local estate agents through the front door. Um, if you're a, a private client solicitor with a favoured estate agent or estate agents, we can go to those guys. If your client would rather we use the family um, relied on estate agent, we can do that. Because we're completely independent, we've got flexibility. We're not tied into anyone. So, you know, we, we check out who's the best people to work with in the area, who have we worked with for the, in the past that we can rely on that knows our, our systems, um, and is there anybody that the estate would like us to work with? And then yeah, the report's put together and normally issued within a couple of days after the Gosh. final visit. Yeah. So, I mean, really from that point of view, the compliance word again, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. You want a Section 160 valuation because that's the requirement for HMRC. It's got to be open market value mm. and not some kind of fuddy-duddy probate value. It's open market value, date of death. And so by getting a nice range like that, even if it's a favoured estate agent that the firm's used before, 
before, you're trying to put it in that objective, compliant world, aren't you, by getting three um, agents to give you the work, the information, I should say. So that how does that work then if, having got the valuation, the firm goes ahead and gets the grant of probate, so now it's all systems go to sell the property. How would PLG help there? Well, again, compliance. <laughs> um, <laughs> We have three different marketing methods at PLG because what we identified is everybody's needs and costs, budget, lifestyle, they vary. And when you're going through a bereavement or a court of protection matter, which there's a lot of stress involved, Jill. What we wanted to try and do was, was put together different services that the public or solicitors would be able to just say, do you know what, that fits exactly what we need, that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we have is our online agent and that kind of challenges um, maybe another well-known online estate agent. The difference is we're much more cost effective. Um, you don't pay bolt-ons for the, the support that our staff provide. We'll do all the negotiation, we'll do the sales progression without paying extra for that. Um, and it does come with a, a small upfront fee, mm. um, as you know these, these services do, but it is much smaller than, than the other guys that are out there. But the real beauty of it is, Jill, is if you try that, if you want to keep your costs down, try the online service first. And for any reason it doesn't work or you want to up the ante, we can switch it to our traditional method. And what we do is when we sell the property, we deduct your upfront oh. fee from the final fee. So you don't lose any money. Um, this particular company that I referred to made a lot of money for properties that they marketed but never actually sold. Yes. And we don't feel that's right here at PLG. You know, how can you take money from somebody and not do the job? Yes. So we wanted to try and, and solve that problem. And then if you're looking for a completely f um, commission-free way of selling, we've got our online auction, um, which gives access to thousands of buyers across the UK yeah. who are financially qualified and ready to go. So we would say to any private client lawyer, the valuation is great because it's going to cost you less than if you go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. If you then sell it through us, mm -hmm. we will discount mm -hmm. the value of the valuation fee from our service anyway. Mm -hmm. So sell through us and you get a free valuation report. Right, so if you look at the saving all round, again, you know, compliance and diligence to your client, mm -hmm. We're saving money in every aspect. So that really is helpful because you've got different types of properties in estates. Obviously, um, you've got the property that's really run down. It probably needs a complete refit. Yeah. So that might suit the auction market, mightn't it, where you get probably developers and, and small builders wanting to get in there. Mm. Um, and sometimes they're quite hard to sell in a local market, aren't they? So a national auction can be quite good. Um, and then you've got the sort of property that's uh, pretty pucker and, uh, you know, you need to get the valuation done, but you do also need to sell it and you can use your traditional method. Yeah. And then you've got the small property that probably doesn't really justify um, a big marketing push. It's not going to be in country life, for example, is it? So, <laughs> so at the end of the day, you're online. So you've got all, all the areas covered, Darren. Well done. Well, we found that our clients' needs varied. And when you're looking at trying to sort of, you know, say, look, this is your one solution. It just doesn't make any sense. So it's really important to ensure that our customers have a choice, that they can have all of the options under one roof. So whatever they're after, they can just come to us. I mean, ultimately, we're here to keep costs down, but also make sure that what we achieve for the property is the highest figure. And the traditional method, when you look at that, you know, there's three estate agents that we have working for us. We become the agent's client. Uh, you would be my clients. Is that kind of we're in the middle there? Um, but by orchestrating the three agents, and because we only pay one of them, um, you find that viewings happen faster. There's more viewers. More viewers mean more offers on the property, and more offers you'll quite simply mean a higher price um, as an end result. And it doesn't matter what marketplace you're in. If you're in a good market, great. We'll get you more money than what you would through through your local agent. So. You know, it's it's a good, diverse way of making things happen. Um, and, and again, depending on your budget and what you require, it's one call into us and we handle everything. Yes. Jill, once again, thank you ever so much for coming in and seeing us. I know it's been a bit of a journey for you. Um, look forward to seeing you again in the very near future. Thanks so much for asking me, Darren. It's been informative for me too. So thanks a million. Magic. So that's it for today from PLG Digital, myself, Darren Leggett. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to speaking with you all very soon.